Everyone has a secret fantasy, something in life they've always wanted to do. One of mine has always been to learn to skydive, to float through the air with the greatest of ease, a daring young man without a trapeze. They say it's never too late to learn, so last April I took a night course in West Seneca with the instructors from the Wyoming County Parachute Center. It's very important that you try to be here for every single session. You probably think me a little bit crazy to want to leap from a perfectly good airplane thousands of feet up in the air and attempt to cheat death by landing safely and softly on the ground. To my surprise, there were 14 others in the class, including two guys old enough to be my father and five women. If crazy was my excuse, what was theirs? Well, I think it's uh, the adventure, the excitement, uh, looking for something different. I guess it's the biggest thing. There may have been 14 people to start out with us that first night of class back in West Seneca, but one month later, here on the first day at the drop zone in Wyoming County, there was little more than half, and as you can see, they are somewhat less than enthusiastic. We may have been looking for excitement at first, but once at the airfield, you start having second thoughts. How do you feel about uh, jumping today? Well, uh, I'm a little nervous. A little edgy day. Scared to death. No way. <laughs> I'm terrified. For a month, we drilled in class. In the next edition of Stan's Storybook, we begin to practice those drills in preparation for flying high. As soon as you leave, you're going down, so don't worry about it. On any given weekend, at drop zones like the Wyoming County Parachute Center, skydivers from hundreds of miles around come to defy death by leaping to the ground from thousands of feet up in the air. It makes you ask, what is the excitement in it? It's everything from the time you start, uh, static line jumps, being under your open parachute, looking around at all the scenery, right into free fall. Uh, there's never a dull moment in skydiving. And after studying about how it's done for a month of Mondays in a West Seneca classroom, me and my classmates start drills at the jump zone that bring us ever closer to that faithful first step. Go. Too bad. Forgot to put your legs. Arch 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, 5, 1,000, check 1,000. Okay. You have a total malfunction. It is said that practice makes perfect. If that's true, we'll either be perfect skydivers or perfect counters. Arch 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, 5, 1,000, check. May West. Total malfunction. Oops. <laughs> what happens to uh, a jumper when they leave the step? What is, what is the procedure from that point on? Well, once they leave the step, uh, then they have to go on their own. Uh, this is why we teach them what we do teach them. Uh, once they leave that step, they're sitting under that canopy all by themselves, and they have to put into effect what they learned in their first jump course. Going to skydiving school is one thing. Actually jumping out of an aeroplane is something else. You'll see just what I mean in the next edition of Stan Storybook. If nothing else, skydiving is colorful. Neither Batman nor Superman can outclass skydivers when it comes to fashion and colors. But when you're a student, you may look macho, but just wearing the rig is enough to turn any baritone to a soprano. And try doing that infernal counting routine. Go. 
Arch 1000, look 1000, pull 1000, check one, pull 1000, five 1000, check 1000. At this point, I began to wonder how many students actually make it to their first jump. We teach about 700 students a year, and out of the 700, uh, they all make their first jump. 10% uh, stick with it. Okay, and that's about the national average also. If being harnessed up like a pack mule isn't enough to give you claustrophobia, cramming five people into a small plane is, especially when you have a date to jump out of that plane at 3,000 feet. You never really appreciate the beauty of the Earth until you see it sprawled out several thousand feet below you. Not like from a jet at 30,000 feet, but from three or 4,000 feet. It's breathtaking especially when they open the door. What uh, is your biggest problem you find with uh, new jumpers? Students. Anticipation, not knowing what to expect uh, when they're up there for the first jump. We teach them everything they're supposed to know, but when you're sitting in a plane at 3,000 feet and that door goes open, uh, you sort of have a memory lapse, and that's the biggest thing. It's just uh, forgetting what they learned at the specific time. Before you can jump free fall without a 12-foot static line to automatically open your chute, you must have five successful practice jumps with the static line attached. Needless to say, my static line jumps were successful. They say practice makes perfect, and after practice and practice on a static line, in my next report, there's no static line. And that's this edition of Stan Storybook. Normally, it takes weeks for student skydivers to make the required number of successful jumps before they are allowed to jump freefall. This will be my second day and only my sixth jump. It's at this point I began to wonder if I did the other five right. Well, when you first started out, you were a little slow getting out the door, uh, but that's normal. Again, you're sitting there in a plane, 3,000 feet, looking straight down, and it's kind of tough to get out that door. And you were a little slow, but uh, we'll forgive you for that. Once you were out there, you did a super job getting, leaving the plane. Somehow, that's not very reassuring when you know that there's no static line to open your chute for you. This time, you're on your own when the big moment arrives. There's no way to describe the calm and peacefulness while floating to the ground. There's no sound, no feeling of falling. It's like being a bird suspended in air. But what goes up must come down. However, not necessarily on the right spot. So, six jumps, one tree landing, and a chipped tooth later, I am still in one piece for another edition of Stan Storybook.